Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing alright, Jared. Having a little deja vu. A little do over. <laughs> but I'm good. <laughs> but I'm good. A little do over. <laughs> We've tested and retested the audio. It, it should be working now. Um, Keyword if should you didn't, be. If you're wondering, if you're wondering. If you're not in the Discord server and you're and you didn't see our tweet and the way Twitter is nowadays, I don't blame you if the tweet just got lost in the mail. Um, but yeah, our 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 audio we're we're re we are re recording this episode. Our audio completely tanked um, on the last episode that we recorded yesterday. So we're doing it again. We're running it back. Kyle, let's do our best not to just attempt to re-record what we said yesterday. Although it is the same notes, so it is what it is. And also, Austin's in the chat this time, and Austin was not here before, so that'll that'll help maybe mix things yeah. up a tad. So we'll, we'll get started. We last week we talked about recruiting. So uh, speaking of deja vu, we'll do talk about recruiting again here. So um, last week we talked about. I'm going mute. <laughs> um, last week we talked about James Peoples uh, committing right right before we hit the record button last week, and we got we got a pair of commits since then. It was a great it was a great weekend uh, for well great week the last week for Ohio State here as they got two outstanding players two in the top 100 in the 24/7 sports composite in Mylon Graham and Air No Land I know it's No Land but I just wanted to say No Land No it, Land it just, Air it just goes well. comma No Land period uh yeah air nolan uh, uh mylan graham five star air nolan just outside that five star um uh the 24 7 sports rankings basically you have to be top 32 to be a five star uh air nolan sitting at 55 so whatever he's a very high five star um which by the way is in the same neighborhood i think maybe and of course their recruiting rankings are going to shift a lot between now and when things finalize so who knows but this is approximately where C.J. Stroud was sitting. C.J. Stroud, also a very high uh, four star quarterback. 42, 42 or something. Wow, like Kyle, that? it's almost like you looked that up yesterday when we recorded before. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's in that it's in that same basic neighborhood. So if you're looking for a comparison uh, and C.J. ended up being pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it, it turns did. out Didn't he? it turns out he was he ended up being pretty good. Um, Aaron Nolan was a uh, Jared your voice sounds a bit echoed okay um, you're fine Jared <laughs> <laughs> but the, the echo was the problem that ruined the last episode but I can't really stop and listen to it so I, I guess we roll um As long as it's a bit echoed, I guess I, I I tested it a thousand times before we started recording. So hopefully everything turns out fine on the recording. Um, anyway, Aaron Nolan uh, joins Ohio State. Uh, there's a bunch of hats on the table. 24 seven sports put out a graphic with a bunch of with a bunch of logos on it. Doesn't matter. Um, it, this this was actually between like three schools. Uh, it was Ohio State, it was Texas A&M, and it was Miami. Texas A&M and Miami apparently brought the dump truck, just the, the dump truck full of guaranteed money, which, by the way, you're not allowed to do. Not that anyone's enforcing that rule. But you're not allowed to do that. Not that anyone cares. You're not allowed to guarantee kids money when they're still being recruited. But hey, who plays by the rules around here? Certainly yeah. not Miami or Texas A&M. Jimbo Fisher famously buying all of his classes. Only for them to take that guaranteed money and, and take off after year one, as we saw what happened with Texas A&M this offseason. Anyway. Yeah. But when it, when it comes down to it, Ohio State is, and oh man, th this, 
uh, Hayes Fawcett, when he put out the graphic uh, for Air Nolan, called Ohio State in the in the or maybe it was no, I think it was a quote. I think it was a quote from Air, Air Nolan calling um, Ohio State QBU, which got everyone like real ruffled, right? That of got course. that got everyone real ruffled, and like I get it. Historically speaking, that's not accurate. It's not accurate, historically speaking. But mm-hmm. historically speaking, please keep in mind that Aaron Nolan uh, hasn't graduated high school yet. I don't know if he cares that much about Mike Tomzak. <laughs> Who is QBU then? USC, I think, would have a really good claim at that. Um, but if we're talking recent, USC was your thought. Yeah. Um, but if we're talking recent and again, Aaron Nolan's a child <laughs> compared, compared to me, cause I'm, I'm at that age now where, where high school kids are, are children to me. Um, recent success, Ryan day at Ohio state. Recently would have to be Oklahoma, I guess. Yeah, but Lincoln Riley is not there anymore. That was all Lincoln Riley. Mm-hmm. So some of the come off the top of my head here, Jared. Yeah, USC, Oklahoma, I think definitely probably your top two. Um, in the past, I mean, if you want to go over the past in the, since the since the millennium here, maybe you can say Florida State with uh, Jameis Winston and um, I know I know probably didn't transition too well into the NFL but maybe Winky Winky was like in his late 20s wasn't he um, but yeah it, I don't know it's again if we have to look at recent success recent success in the draft it's hard to do better than Ohio State Ryan Day at Ohio State has coached Joe Burrow, Dwayne Haskins, Justin Fields, and C.J. Stroud. First round, first round, first round, first round. Oh, but but, but Joe Burrow, LSU. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Like, still, the last three starters at Ohio State, and we'll just go ahead and we'll we'll fast forward a a little bit and just count C.J. Stroud as a first round pick. C.J. Stroud as a first round pick. We'll count it. Last three starters at Ohio State have become first round picks. And the fact of the matter is, is that Joe Burrow does very much still claim Ohio State, has his bachelor's from Ohio State, credits Ohio State with his development. Oh, but then Justin Fields, Justin Fields is a Georgia guy, too. No. No, 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 no. Joe Burrow has spent three years. Three not years. Three mu- not three months. Not three months. <laughs> Justin Fields spent like three months at Georgia. Joe Burrow spent like three years at Ohio State. And you'll never, you will never, ever, ever, ever see me trying to. Cl- we we share Joe Burrow with LSU. He has, he has his graduate degree from one university and his bachelor's degree from another university. Yep. It's yep, fine. Yep. You'll never, ever see me try and claim if, if yours has an amazing year, Texas goes first overall next year, yada, yada, yada. I, you will never see me attempt to claim Quinn yours. Never, ever, ever see me try to attempt to claim Quinn yours whatsoever. He's barely yeah. at Ohio State. He was at Ohio State long enough to collect a truck and leave. And then return that truck. <laughs> Probably. Or have to pay for it. I don't know what happened there, and I don't care. Um, Ohio State, recent success, not all time, recent success is, in fact, quarterback you. And they could share that claim with you know, with Alabama, they could share that claim with just Lincoln Riley. We can just say Lincoln Riley, 
right? Uh, where, wherever Lincoln Riley happens to be. But it's out, outside of that. Like, those are your three. De- if you're a top quarterback in the country, those are your three choices, in my opinion. Why would you, if you could go play for one of those three schools, why would you go play anywhere else? I don't, I don't think that's a hard decision. I don't think that's a hot take. So if you're Aaron Nolan and Ryan Day says, hey, you. <laughs> yes, sir. Like, it's where you go. Those are your choices. And credit to, to Aaron Nolan for passing up the immediate money, which, by the way, we've seen not specifically from Texas A&M or Miami, granted. Um, but we have seen situations in which guaranteed money was not delivered when the kids showed up at other universities. One of them in Florida, but not Miami. Um, but yeah, we've seen that guaranteed money not actually show up. When, mm-hmm. when it came time to sign that uh, letter of intent. Yep. Uh, but will you claim Rayola? I will not claim Rayola. Ohio State prepared Burrow. LSU got him where he is. I mean, both, I, both schools, both schools. There's only, uh, yes, it, it was Florida. <laughs> that gift's amazing. All right, so Mylon My, My Graham here, Jared. Yeah. Uh, My, Mylon Graham here, uh, one of the best wide receivers in the country here uh, for the 24-7 sports composite, 27th and nationally overall, fifth best wide receiver and the best recruit out of the state of Indiana, which you said I, in our first recording, Jared. Yes. Indiana might as well be an in-state Indiana's an in, Indiana's in-state recruiting to me. I'll, I don't I don't care what anyone has to say about it. If you're the best player in Indiana, you're coming to play for Ohio State, or Ohio State failed. Yeah, and Ohio, and Ohio State got a couple of really good players from Indiana too. Do you remember remember those two players we said in the first? Oh, it's, run, Jared? it's been more than two. We were talking specifically wide receivers last time we recorded. Yes, but Kyle, we're gonna we're gonna not try and just re-record the episode that, that blew up. But yeah, Ohio State's pulled some solid wide receivers out of the state of Indiana. Yeah, Indiana is in state territory, in my opinion. Um, so is Western which Pennsylvania. Is, yeah, which is, is which is gr- recruiting territory, in my opinion. Which is. Which is great because that's just less players going to Notre Dame as well. The fact that Ryan Wingo isn't coming to Ohio State means Heartline is washed, right? Yeah, it's exactly what it means. <laughs> you know, ever since they made him the offensive coordinator, the wide receivers have really gone to hell, you guys. I know, right? <laughs> you know, you know, someone's going to say that unironically at some point. It's going to happen. Someone at some point will say that. Because Ohio State will end up missing out on some wide receiver. He didn't get Mike Matthews either, bum, right? What an absolute bum. And I'll have to let you know right now, um, I'm not going to get Makai Hudson either. Oh, you got there. Got there slightly before me, Austin. Yeah, I know. It's 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 a, what a what a what a turn of events. I guess we'll have to settle for, you know, Mylon Graham and Jeremiah Smith. We'll have to settle. I mean, only the number one and eighth player in the country in, the, in that position. Right. All right. So Ohio State. But by, by the way, th- these things we've talked about it before. These things feed each other. Why Ohio State? Why pass? If you're Aaron Nolan, why pass on all of that money? Well, it has to do with draft success. You come to Ohio State, draft success. And also just look at the wide receivers. Look at the guys you get to throw to. The wide receivers come here because the quarterbacks come here. The quarterbacks come here because the wide receivers come here. They just feed off each other. 
it's 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 a wonderful self perpetuating cycle. Yes. Um, yeah, but my 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 line comes in straight. My line comes in here. Talk about recent draft success. Texas A and M comparatively. Ryan Tannehill, it's not bad. Johnny Manziel, uh, had his moment. Um, he was a wide receiver though. Um, I know. I know. I'm just talking NFL draft success mostly. Um, Miami. On the other hand, you have to go all the way back in the way, way back to Vinny Testaverde to the last time Miami had a first round quarterback picked. Um, <laughs> Zach, you're old enough to know who Vinny Testaverde is. Austin, you probably know because I know you're just a giant football nerd. You probably know who Vinny Testaverde is, but honestly, Clemson uh, no. might be a shout recently. That's yeah, they've put some quarterbacks into the league, of course. You, I will, I will, Austin, and I did. Nah, they, they've, <laughs> they've had wonderful success putting quarterbacks into the league recently. Um, but I kind of feel like that's already passed for what it's worth. Um, I feel like that moment has passed for Clemson, yeah. All right, and then uh, talking about Aaron Nolan, the the last the the second player this last week here to commit to Ohio State. Here heard a lot of buzz about Aaron Nolan here, and this is this is this is Ohio State's guy here. Yeah, definitely a different type of quarterback. Um, you get, you get a lefty coming in here. Oh like boy. when's the last time? When's the last time Ohio State had a lefty starter? I don't even know how to search that up, Jared. So don't, don't even I, ask I, me to I, I, look I, I, that up I, I, here. No. Last time I was they had a lefty, left-handed quarterback. Ohio State's going to have to improve their right tackle recruiting. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> um, the yeah, I don't know, but you once again talk about you know someone's going to you know someone's going to claim that the reason why Ohio State doesn't get you know name your wide receiver Makai Hudson. Ohio State doesn't get Makai Hudson because uh, Heartline's distracted being the offensive coordinator now. You know someone's going to say it, right? You know someone's going to say it. You're also going to hear someone say, well, sure, but can Ryan Day coach a left-handed quarterback? Someone's going to say it. I'm tossing that out there, someone's going to say it. If someone hasn't already said it. If someone hasn't already said it, uh, ask Sloopcast, do we think wide receivers uh, coach at Arkansas is going to get a shot at being an OC soon? I don't know. You know who that is, though? I it, it, It's uh, Kenny Guyton. Is that right? It is. It is. Kenny G. I don't know. Um it probably depends upon a lot about uh, how good Arkansas's offense is this year. God, I love Kenny Guyton. Me too. As do I. Of all of the, like, in all due respect to Kenny Guyton, backups at Ohio State, because that's, he's a backup. That's, that's, that was his ceiling at Ohio State. Of all of the backups at Ohio State uh, ever, he's my favorite. Like the dedicated backup quarterbacks, he's my favorite. He had one incredible game. He absolutely did. All right, Kyle. Um, last week's – actually, let's rewind two weeks ago. Um, two weeks ago, we did a um, mock class for Ohio State. Mm-hmm. This is this is the incredible recruiting run that Ohio State 
has gone on. When we did this mock recruiting class, we released this episode on March 20th, not that long ago, 20 days ago. Ohio State only had four, count it, four recruits at the time. Jeremiah Smith, Ian Moore, Garrett Stover, Mark Nave. Yep. How many do they have right now, Kyle? Uh, nine. They have nine. More than double that. More than doubled. And by the way, just to... My mocks for the 2023 class were not good. I've done some very good mocks in the past. We we do mock classes. I think my 2021s were pretty good. I think my 2022s were... Or excuse my 2020... My 2020s, my 2021s were pretty good. My mock classes in 2022 sucked. So I'm I'm I am in this year. I am focused. I'm going to make the best mocks I can make. Just want to point this out. I had Aaron Oland in the class. Um, but I also need I also had my uh, Mylon Graham in the class. Um. And I had the uh, the Armstrong brothers in the class. Um, My I did, and I and I will also own this. Could have left out the twenty twenty two. Not sure what that means. Um, The the one miss I had, and I'll I have to own the miss as well. Um, I had to pick between Jordan Marshall and James Peoples. I went Jordan Marshall. Just have to own that as well. Um, but I, I think Ohio State potentially uh, wins out in that deal. I had some yeah. bad classes in 2020. Oh, uh, could have left out the. Yeah, it was just a, a bad 2022. Just, just in general. Just in general, had a bad 2022. Um, it was a jab dam. I know. I got you. Um, All right. So so who's next then, Jared? Who's next here? Yeah. How State, how State is red hot, red hot in April here. What What's next for them? Last week, Kyle, uh, episode we released April 3rd, we asked that question. We asked who's next. And I will point out I had James Peoples in the in the thumbnail because he had just committed. Also in that thumbnail. Kyle, Miles Graham and Aaron Olin. Not a mock, not a mock, but still I'm winning, damn it. I'm winning. So let's <laughs> we're hot. All right. We're on a hot streak. What you do when you're gambling, you're on a hot streak. You stop. That's what a smart person does. Me, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going, Kyle. And this and this is this is why we always tell for however many years we've been doing this now, Jared. We don't 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 real life gamble. We don't real life gamble. Yeah, yeah. So um, what, what, what rule is that? What last, rule is that? Yeah. What, what rule is that, Lore Master Austin? <laughs> that is rule number two. It is rule number two. Um. All right. Last week, we didn't just predict. We, we gave you a bunch of names. We didn't just predict Graham and Nolan. We gave you some other names. I'm just going to realistically Bryce West is next. Right. I think that's a good name. I think he's in the conversation. Awesome. Um, so last week, and if you want to hear talk about these individuals in a little more detail, uh, you can go back, listen to last week's episode. Um, but so I'm just going to name them off real quick because I'm, I, I double down on all of these players. Uh, Charles Lester, five-star cornerback out of Florida. Uh, Peyton Pierce, four-star linebacker out of Texas. Kyle, I said I double down on all of these. I'm tripling down on Peyton Pierce. Um, I, I think that one's somewhat imminent. Um, Dylan Stewart, five-star edge rusher from the D.C. area, number 10 player in the entire country. Sam Williams-Dixon, four-star running back from Pick North. I think Lester is going to FSU. I think right now he is an FSU lean, um, but I don't also don't think it's over. 
but I agree with you that he's an FSU lean right now. So, Kyle, those are some quick names of who who could be next. Let's add some new names to the list. All right, let's let's do it. Who who you got? Um, Well, I guess we'll start off with. uh, I guess we'll start off with Bryce West here. Yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of, lot of, lot of buzz with Bryce West um, recently here, and for and for uh, good reason too. Like there's, he's he, he's a guy, he's he is one of Ohio State's top guys to go after right now. Absolutely, um, definitely, definitely need to land. Um, Definitely need to land your top recruits in state here, and Ohio, and Ohio has two great corners um, with Bryce West and Aaron Scott. So those two are a must get for Ohio State. These uh, are for both, this recruiting class. These are both five star level talent guys. They're both four stars currently, um, but man, we talked about. Talk about Nolan being just outside that top 32. Aaron Scott's literally sitting at 36. Um, That's just how close he is to a five star guy. Um, Bryce West in the composite is at 49. Uh, And and, and, and am I jumbling up 24 seven sports proper rankings and the composite rankings uh, in order to, to, to make these guys sound better? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Uh, I'm, I'm picking and choosing. But I think these are both like five star caliber players, um, even if they're currently just just high four star guys. Uh, and yeah, you, you have to bring these guys home uh, there. There appeared to be. And I and I think it was a quote that was blown out of proportion by some people um, simply because Bryce West observed that Michigan was recruiting well in the state. And a lot of people were like, oh, my God, we're going to lose Bryce West and we're going to and I I said day one that that was an overreaction I think Bryce West is coming home to Ohio State I I I still have no doubt about that I never had any doubt about that I still don't have any doubt about that Uh, I believe Ohio State and Bryce West are on a collision course this is going to happen Um, if you absolutely had to pick we're asking who's next right and if you're really asking which individual person is next, he's in my like top three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's in my top three. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Scott, I yep. don't believe is 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 as imminent as Bryce West. Uh, I know he just put out a top twelve. My guy, <laughs> it's April, where we're too late in the game for you to be putting out it. Like. Mr. Scott, can I call you Mr. Scott? Mr. Scott, with all due respect, it's a little it's a little late in the season. It's a little late in the recruiting season putting out a top 12. Um, I Buckeye Esquire in our Discord server um, accurately pointed out that if you look at that graphic, only only the schools on the left side of the graphic have a realistic chance. And even then, I think there's a couple extra thrown in. If they're on the right side of the graphic, you can just go ahead and get rid of this. Is it? He still has a whole year. I mean, does he plan on early enrolling? Does he plan on? Um, I'm not sure if he's advertised a commitment due date for himself. A lot of players will be like, hey, I want to. I want to get this done before high school football season starts so I can focus on it. I, I don't know. I don't know if he has a timetable in mind yet, but like last year's class, most of them, not all of them, most of them are currently in spring practice right now. Early enrolling is the norm now. And I don't know if Aaron Scott has plans to early enroll or not. I don't know. But no, he doesn't have a year. I mean, at best, he has 10 months if he goes to the traditional National Signing Day. If he goes to December, the new National Signing Day, um, what's that's eight months out? 
quick maths. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And that's if he wants to take it all the way to the day. I'm just saying it's a little late in the game to be putting out a top 12. We're early in the cycle, but we're not that early in the cycle. Yeah. So um, those are, so you're, those you're, are you're, two you're, big you're, names, two big in-state names. Um, and with Michigan really trying to make waves recruiting in Ohio right now, locking yeah, down was, those was, two individuals are paramount. Yeah. Um, I was I was just going to mention here, if you if you look at the top 15 recruits in the state of Ohio, Michigan has four of them, and you pretty much, much you pretty much right now just pencil in Brian Robinson to Michigan there too. So you got five in the top fifteen going up north there. They're, they're, Michigan is making a a strong statement of trying to come into the state of Ohio and take these recruits from from Ohio State. Jalen Marshall, but. but you're you're going there already. You go ahead. But of those five, only one of them had an Ohio State offer, though. Jalen Marshall, which is what I was. Jalen yes. Marshall. Yeah. Um, so. You won't convince me that Ohio State wouldn't take one or two of those offensive linemen. If, if you're not going to convince me that they wouldn't have yeah. absolutely taken Ben Roebuck. I think they just knew they weren't going to, maybe they talked to him. Maybe they knew early on he was going to go to Michigan and they just didn't offer him because Ohio state likes to limit the amount of scholarships they offer. A lot of teams will just carpet bomb offers out there. Ohio state does not. Uh, for a lot of reasons. And I think partially because the fact that they don't do it makes an Ohio State offer kind of prestigious. And I think, you know, if there's less of them out there, they're more valuable. And I think they use that to get kids to come visit, even if those kids aren't necessarily planning on coming to Ohio State, where they say, well, you're not going to get a offer from us unless you come camp with us. So it gets kids on campus. Which, by the way, is is exactly why Aaron Nolan didn't get an offer until last week, because he, he wasn't on campus yet. A, a fact that both Miami and Texas A&M tried to use against Ohio State. But Nolan knew he had knew he had an offer in his pocket and he just had to come to Columbus first. So it didn't. Yep. So that didn't really land. Yep. All right, Kyle. Um, we've added Aaron Scott, Bryce West to the who's next list. Where, where do you want to go next? Uh, well, let's let's go back to the wide receivers here. Uh, Ohio State looking to add a third wide receiver to this class here and look no further than uh, Jeremiah McClellan. Yeah, Jeremiah McClellan um, from the St. Louis area, um, which is a place Ohio State has had uh, somewhat recent success recruiting out of St. Louis. Um I think this is an absolutely solid wide receiver pickup. Um, I, I, I can rattle off. He's a top 150 player, top 25 wide receiver in the country compared to the wide receivers currently in the class. Those numbers aren't going to jump out and 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 shock you. When the other yeah, wide receivers are top five, top 10 wide receivers in the class, those numbers don't shock you. In my opinion, and I'm going to repeat this later when we talk about someone else. If you're getting an offer, an actionable offer, which Ohio State would take Jeremiah McClellan, in my opinion, tomorrow. If McClellan calls up and says, hey, I want to commit, they're like, cool. Call Hayes Fawcett and have him put out the graphic. Ohio State... Uh, in my opinion, would absolutely take McClellan. So if Ohio State's willing to take an offer or give an offer, uh, take a commitment from a guy in the month of April, especially at the wide receiver position where they are not hurting for numbers, 
that's all of that's that's I, I don't care about recruiting stars or rankings or anything past that. If Brian Hartline says that's my guy and he says that eight months ahead of when he needs to say it at this point, I just say, yeah, OK. <laughs> I, I trust you, Mr. Hartline. Yeah, McLennan here, if you look at him, he's a he's a buck ninety um, weight already here as a as a junior. Uh, add a little bit more weight in there, and you got yourself a, a pretty physical uh target there for Ohio State in the coming years, too. Uh Allen over at 24-7 Sports compares him to David Bell. Which I know Ohio I mean, State a, fans know very well. I mean, we, don't, we, don't, we don't talk about David Bell. I know, but we don't, we, just, just saying, just we, saying, Jared. We don't talk about David Bell here. Uh, <laughs> All right, fine, fine. Let's, let's let's talk about Reggie Powers then, Jared. Reggie Powers. Reggie Powers. <laughs> Reggie Powers uh, is a uh, safety out of the Dayton area, Centerville High School uh, in Dayton. Um, not Centerville, Ohio, but Centerville because there's a Centerville, anyway, Centerville High School in Dayton, Ohio, um, Reggie Powers. Once again, I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to read the rankings to you. I'm not going to do it. Ohio State is currently not hurting for safeties. Do they want to add safeties in this class? Yes, they do. But they aren't hurting for safeties. And it's April. If Ohio State is offering Reggie Powers, if Jeremiah Smith is tweeting at Reggie Powers, he's the yeah, three he star, is, right? Not that I care. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, he is, according to the 24-7 Sports proper rankings, the 54th best safety in the country and the 19th best player in the state of Ohio. Olave was a three star as a reminder. A lot, a lot of guys are three stars. Um, yeah, that's why independent evaluation matters. Yep, might be the best wide receiver in Ohio State history. Isn't it crazy that we say might? The craziest part is there might not have ever been an instance in which he was the best wide receiver on the team, and that's ridiculous. That that, is, yeah, and here, that that is an arguable point. Maybe it's not a true point, but it's ridiculous that it's an arguable point. Yep. The composite has him 51st and 19th in the state. Yes. Yes, they do. I said 54th because it was the 24th. I was reading 24-7 proper rankings, not the composite rankings. Um, OK, but basically the same. OK. I never know what I actually say. So, but th thank you for the clarification. Um, once again, if Ohio State's offering in April, if Ohio State's willing to take commitment in April, they've, they've, they, listen, Jeremiah Smith, who's currently like the class leader, at least publicly on in social media, the, the class, like the, the peer leader in recruiting right now, is taking his time to tweet at Reggie Powers. Jeremiah Smith's not, with all due respect to Jeremiah Smith, he's not just doing that. He was given, he was given that <laughs> by someone. So someone at Ohio State was like, hey, um, Ryan Day, Brian Hartline is like, hey, can you uh, tweet at Reggie Powers for us? Sort of show him some love. What else do you need to know? Reggie Powers not out, or Jeremiah Smith's not out here doing talent evaluation. That is coming from a coach. Um, I really want Ohio State to get Trader. I still believe Ohio State gets Trader. Uh, I'm not including him in today's episode because I don't believe that's imminent. Not because I, I'm. He's not being included for that reason, not because I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to happen, but only because I don't believe it's I don't I don't think he's like in the who's next. Portion of, of the recruiting cycle. 
So speaking of Austin, like, I know like you. Who, I know. I know you've seen Trader play, and the fact that he is being recruited as a cornerback is gaining a lot of steam. I'd be interested in your thoughts on that. I know you're down there. Better for Trader seems to be down to Miami, FSU, OSU. I don't realistically fear Miami in that recruiting. If I'm being honest, mm-hmm. FSU, sure. So I don't, one, I don't one fear thing Miami that, in that recruiting. One thing I want to mention here that um, that I want to make sure people uh, don't go unnoticed here is the rise and return of Glenville High School. Yeah, yeah, and, and that and them starting to starting to really produce some um, some good athletes out of that out of that football program here, and it's a it's a great. It's a it's a great thing to see Glenville coming back up again here. Uh, I asked Austin about Trader. Uh, he's got the tools to play. This is from Austin uh, to play corner and develop. He's more of a natural receiver. You have to work more with backpedal flipping of his hips. His route running is really good, so he can do it. But he naturally just runs routes and has good ball skills. Austin, I'll say this. Playing wide receiver is just inherently more natural. That's why there's a thousand wide receivers who can play in the NFL right now and only about 20 corners that can cover them. I, those numbers are exaggerated, but you get my you get you get my point. Um, those of you old enough to remember Sean Springs, Sean Springs could have played wide receiver or cornerback in the NFL. He chose cornerback because less people can do it. Um, he has he has the tools to play corner. I think he would be B plus corner, but could be an A plus wide receiver. That's your assessment. A lot of that will have to come down to coaching, I suppose. Um a lot of that have to come down to coaching, you know, and, you know, you bring them in and you say, yeah, you can try it corner. And hey, if it doesn't work out, you can always go back to wide receiver. Corners are just more valuable. Reality of the situation. That's why you see these insane passing numbers in college football. You have insane passing numbers in college football. Why? It is much, much easier to play wide receiver like as a natural athlete than it is to play corner. One guy gets Mm -hmm. to run forward. The other guy has to run backwards. (laughs) Do I need to say more? He's also 6'1 or 6'2. So if you can play corner at that size, hell yeah, exactly. The ironic part, Austin, is if you're completely correct, he's a B plus corner, but an A plus wide receiver. And let's just say that that's perpetually true throughout his entire career he's going to make more money as a b-plus corner he would make more money long term in the nfl as a b-plus corner than he would as an a-plus wide receiver maybe 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 all right uh so talked about bryce west um Peyton pierce a little bit jeremiah mcclennan reggie powers who, who else? Who else should? Uh, has, should um, you were talking? You were talking up Glenville, and rightfully so. Mm-hmm. Marion Witten, tight end, uh, out of Glenville High School in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, Kyle, it needs to be noted. By the way, I don't know if you know this, Jared. More's coming, Austin from Austin. Uh, but Nolan and Trader work out together. Yep. And and also worth noting, um, they played on the same seven on seven team. Yep. Absolutely. And then, of course, I, and I know I don't have to tell you this, Austin, but in case anyone needs to hear it, Trader and Jeremiah Smith are wide receivers on the same high school team. Um, I know you know that, Austin, but, it you know, it, it, it should be said. Um, Talk about Demarion Witten. Yes. Ohio is very, very deep this year. Ohio is very, very deep in talent this year. Um, Deeper than it's been in recent years. Uh, Having three offensive linemen come out of the same high school. 
helps. Um, yes. Having Glenville back being Glenville again helps. Um, Dar- uh, Damarian Witten, I think, would be a huge asset add for Ohio State. Um, you know, he's just outside the top 10 tight ends in the country. He's in the backyard. He's a big dude. He's 6'4", um, you know, 215 as a as a junior. They'll obviously add a, a few more pounds on him once he gets to once he gets to Ohio State. But be a huge ad for Ohio State. Um, and, and I think a realistic candidate for who's next. Zaquai Patterson, Zaquan Patterson. Um, you think so? I've not heard a ton of buzz around Patterson. There's a shot. Fair. Sorry, who, 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 else, who else should we look out for here that may may commit here soon or may commit next? Marquise Lightfoot. This is not a name we've brought up before, unless you count the episode that we threw away yesterday. Um, Marquise Lightfoot uh, out of Chicago, Illinois, the Kenwood Academy, edge rusher, um, just visited raving about the about the visit. Um, he's a high. All right. So. Just I have to throw this out there. This is one of the biggest discrepancies, especially this late in the recruiting cycle that I've seen in a long time. 24 seven sports proper rankings have him as the 29th best edge rusher in the country. The composite ranking have him has him as the eighth best edge rusher in the country. A 21 spot difference, especially like in the top 30. That's it. That's an enormous gap. Um, it tells me 24 seven needs to get their foot out of their ass. Maybe. Um, maybe they just haven't seen him for whatever reason. You know, the only grade a guy so high based off of tape. And maybe they just need to see him in person and you might get a big bump. Or maybe they just legitimately don't like him for whatever reason. I have no idea, but I would I would guess it's the former. 6'5", 215 to Sheesh. When he balks up, will be a monster. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but yeah, Lightfoot, like I said, just visited. Uh, I think uh, probably a realistic option to join the class. Um, probably not super high up on the quote unquote, who's next factor. So I I am going to throw this question to y'all and I'm going to force you to pick one. I gave you a bunch of names. I yelled. It's fine. I yell sometimes YouTube. Uh, if you're not listening to, if you're not watching or listening to this on, on YouTube, hop over to one of the YouTube feeds, um, I don't I don't care if it's I don't care if it's uh, our YouTube feed. We have our own YouTube channel or the Buckeye Huddle YouTube feed. Either one doesn't matter to me. Go into the comment section and uh, let us know. And you get one guess. Let us know who you think is next. You get one name. Who do you think is next? Austin says his pick would be Bryce West. Austin, he's in that's, my top three. Yep, that's that's mine too. The next one's going to be is going to be, uh, yeah, going to be the best recruit out of the state of Ohio, Bryce West. I I think Reggie Powers is a good guess, mm-hmm. but yeah. I'm going to pick one. And I'm not going to pick Bryce West because both of y'all pick because Austin picked Bryce West. Kyle picked Bryce West. Y'all. So I'm not going to pick Bryce West. That That's not fun. I'm going to pick Hearing someone different over here, Austin. Well, I'm just saying it's not fun. It's not fun if we all pick the same person. That's all. <laughs> I'm going to go Peyton Pierce. Uh, we didn't talk about in detail this episode. We talked about him on last week's episode a little bit more. 
Uh, he's picked up a couple crystal balls since we last talked about him. Um, or maybe just the one crystal ball, but it's but it's Will Fong, so that counts for like four. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, Peyton Pierce, linebacker uh, out of Texas, I, I think uh, will be my pick for who's next. How many commits is OSU going to take in this class? 25. I always assume it's about 25. It might be higher this year. And I say that because one, they had a smaller than planned for class last year, although they may have bridged that gap by bringing in more transfer players um, than they maybe normally would have. So I'm not 100 mm-hmm. percent sure. Um, and I'll also say that the the 2020 recruiting class is a monster recruiting class and they're going to lose a bunch of three year guys, I think, at the end of this at the end of the season. Yeah, they're, you're, you're talking a, you're going to lose a ton of third year players this year. Um, Sawyer. Uh, Ike could have left already, but he will. Ike will leave. Steele will leave. Uh, JT will leave. Um the decent chance Kyle McCord's going to go one and out. Denzel Burke is going to leave. Marvin Harrison Jr., of course, is going to leave. Um, Ohio State, you know, Ohio State needs to make a title run this year because they're just letting y'all know it, right now. I said, I got their sophomore y'all. class. Kyle, I yelled again. Um, well, they're juniors now. But. Yeah. Ohio State is going to lose a ton, a ton of talent after this season. Um, so yeah, Donovan Jackson. Can, yeah. Austin before, keeps going. Before we, before we end the episode, I want to throw one more name out there just because there was a recent crystal ball here, Jared. Okay. And I'm going to add another corner back here, Jared. And that is Miles Lockhart. All right. Um, Lockhart. We're calling him a corner now. Yes, yes, I, we are calling him a corner. I, yep. and I mean, I, I know that was said in the form of a question, but he was <laughs> he was a running back when we did the mock a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, so we'll call him athlete at this point. I mean, he seems athletic enough. Yeah, yeah. And as God, you want to talk about long term financials. If you can play anything but running back. Yes, kids don't grow up to be a running back. Are there any young children listening? Play any position other than running back. There Zeke's only what, 27 NFL is ready to throw him away. Yeah. Yeah. It don't don't play running back. All right, Kyle, I think that's it. I think that's the end of the episode. Um, ask everyone to drop their guests on the in the YouTube comments. Um, so please go ahead and do that. Um, go check out our merch. We have merch. Um you can go to merch.thesloopcast.com. I am wearing uh, the official Sloopcast logo tee. It's just a, it's just our logo over the over the breast. Um, I like it. Nice and simple. This is this is this is this is our cleanest design. Now, if you're thinking to yourself right now, or if you're a weirdo and you said it out loud, um, Jared, I don't. Uh, I, 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 I love y'all, but I'm not going to wear podcast merch. You can head over to 7071, which, which is numerical, 7071.thesloopcast.com. There's a bunch of just like Ohio-based stuff there um, that also supports us in the exact same way as the actual merch supports us. So, again, it's just like a bunch of Ohio-based uh, merch not merch apparel, just a bunch of Ohio based apparel over there at uh, 7071.thesloopcast.com. And by the way, it's the same store also. 
um it's still a, a t pub it's still t public so if you want to get like one from one and one from the other and yada 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 go go for it um that's it, Kyle. Uh, and by the way, if you're looking for any of these links, whether it be the YouTube channels or the merch stores, um, if you didn't hear me right or whatever, you can just go to the sloopcast.com and that's a, a site that will provide all of those links to you. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, I'll just mention the the um, transfer of, excuse me, of uh, Jameson Battle from Minnesota coming over to Ohio State for basketball here. Uh, definitely a position that Ohio State needed as they lost quite a few players and potentially more. We'll, we'll see what happens in the NFL draft. But being able to get NBA someone who can shoot beyond the NBA draft, thank you. Uh <laughs> So getting someone who can shoot behind the arc there is going to be very beneficial for the for the 23-24 season. Yeah. Um, stole him from Minnesota, too. So that's always nice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And it and probably should be. Uh, no, no one has to hear us say this. I don't know why I felt compelled to say it. Everyone knows spring games this weekend. Yeah. Um, well, we'll be right here next Monday, hopefully Monday. <laughs> if I don't screw up the audio again, uh, we'll be here on Monday, uh, breaking down what we saw in the spring game. And Kyle, I think who wins? I don't even do we even know who the teams are at this point. Shh. OK, fair. Um, who cares? <laughs> uh, the, the, the team Gray. Team Brutus. That's not a. It's not an answer, Kyle. It's always Brutus is always the answer. No, oh, that's fair. Okay. I, I wish they let that, McCord that, that, and Brown draft their own teams. Oh, that would be fun. It's not. I don't think it's a good idea for like locker room dynamics. <laughs> but it would be fun. <laughs> Just do it behind closed doors. I don't think that would help. I think that would bruise egos. Quarterbacks need to be leaders. Oh. So behind doors, even for the quarterbacks. So they don't know who was picked when. That's actually that that might work. That might that might work. All right, so we'll, we'll be here on uh, we'll be here next week to break down what we saw in the spring game. And Kyle, maybe we'll do a roster prediction. Ooh, that'd be fun, perhaps. Or maybe there'll be tons to talk about from the spring game and we won't have time and we'll do the roster prediction the next week. But if uh, the spring game turns out to be the spring game that we normally see, well, we might do a roster prediction next week. <laughs> All right, Kyle, uh, you did Kyle's Corner. Tonight's ending music is Courtney from Work. Courtney from Work is also playing on Saturday, and they're playing Saturday night. And by the way, not that far from campus, Glen Echo, not that far from campus. Listen, go, go see Ohio State play. Hang around campus for a bit. Walk on over to the Glen Echo area and uh, at the Roomba Cafe. I believe they I think that's what they call that neighborhood. I'm suddenly doubting myself. Uh, Roomba Cafe in Columbus, Ohio. Um, go, go see Courtney from work and a few other bands play. But Courtney from work is uh, breaking news on the Sloopcast. Uh Oh, what? Uh, you can go see them play over at uh, the Roomba Cafe in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, yeah. Cliff Kingsbury yep. is the new USC quarterback coach. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good pickup for USC. That's a great pickup. That's a great pickup for um, for Lincoln Riley. Yeah. I, yeah, I think that's a, that's a, that's a good pickup for sure. Um, Cliff Kingsbury to me is like one of the most prominent fail up <laughs> coaches I've ever seen. Um, but. You know, he's a quarterback coach. It'll work. Cliff and Lincoln are the same vibe. I I don't disagree with you, except that um, I think Lincoln is more successful. 
But anyway, um, that's it. That's the end of the episode. Cliff Kingsbury is what happens if you try to buy. You know what I'm saying? Cliff did coach Mahomes, too. Uh, right. But isn't that kind of isn't that kind of like saying Harbaugh coached um, Andrew Luck? It's an indictment in some ways. Anyways, yeah. All right. Courtney from. Yeah, uh, Courtney from work ending the, today's episode. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, Courtney from work. 